The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with Jeff Belknap. And this is our annual College Bowl show, preview show, where our prognosticators uh, will give us their thoughts, uh, their views on the many, many, many upcoming bowls uh, for the 2018-2019 season. And that means it's also time for our prognosticator from Cleveland, the big man himself, George Jorge Mish. George, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. Is glad to have you back. I hope you're feeling better. I know I am. So so. Yeah. When was Jeff trying? Was he trying to sell a casino to somebody? That's because he's a little late. Oh what? no, a dispensary. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. It's down at three point seven eight million. If, if right. anyone's uh, watching this uh, is interested. Okay. Very good. I get I get a little cut, but not not as much as uh, you made in the years of betting. Yes. Well, gentlemen, it is, uh, once again, good to have you guys all on. George, it's really good to have you back on the show again, I, man. I can't express my, uh, I, no, I'm, I'm very happy right now. It's yeah. a little warm in this room because I don't have the fan on in 28-degree weather, but better to be warm than cold. Yeah, amen. Yeah, it will if you have a choice. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, listen, um, we've I've got my sheet in front of you, and uh, this is how this works, folks. If you're tuning in, I am the uh, moderator here, uh, and uh, the uh, opinions are those of uh, Jeff and Jorge, and uh, I will keep track of these, and we basically are going to take these bowl by bowl as we get down to finally the, uh, the predictions for the uh, the playoffs, and ultimately uh, who is going to win the... Uh, and no bloviating. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, we'll try not to. Okay. All right, well, without further ado, uh, you know, uh, gentlemen... Uh, we're going to get started, and this is uh, actually one that's uh, for tonight, the the Frisco Bowl. And uh, I don't think we can call a winner at five minutes uh, into. Well, uh, can I take a can I take UAB, UAB minus two and a half first? You want to go, you want to go with UAB at two and a half? Yeah, put the, put bet the house on it. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to go first, guys? I'll bet they win by twenty four. Uh, 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 who's going first? Yep. The you, fr you're first. Okay, uh, obviously Ohio, San Diego State, uh, the line just dropped down to two, and that's perfect because uh, I believe the running game of Ohio will negate the uh, 25th ranked defense of San Diego, and uh, the only thing I worry about in this game is the special teams, which San Diego State has number eight, and uh, OU's defense is 107, but I'm going to stick with uh, Frank Solich and the boys in Ohio, and I'm going to have uh, take them at minus two, but the game is going to be Ohio winning by six. All right. I love it. Actually, I love the Ohio in this game, and this is actually a game that I did bet. I actually bet it at minus three, and I think I, I've i watched San Diego State. I mean, obviously, us being on the West Coast, it gives us kind of like those are the last game type of scenario, so I've watched – San Diego State played four times. Um, one of those times was was against UNLV, yeah. and they did not play well against UNLV. They did not play well against Fresno. I mean, they won against UNLV. Um, they just didn't play well. I mean, UNLV just is really bad. You know, well, they played really bad most of the year, but um, I, I'm i probably going to go with, like, a 10-point victory okay. for, for uh, Ohio. And actually, I – when I first looked at the games, the setups before the spreads, I kind of figured it at about seven points, but I do think that they can win by game by 10. All right. Okay. Next up we have Thursday on the 20th and that's the, <laughs> I think we should also have a poll for the worst name for a bowl. Um, at, uh, you know, maybe f folks, if you're listening in, uh, just email us <laughs> what you think is actually the worst name for a college bowl. This is the Gasparilla bowl. Uh, Marshall against uh, South Florida. Who would like no, to take I this one first? I wasn't but this is, a, this is a not a very known fact that at halftime, I swear to God, they, they are going to have a, tra a, a mower, uh, speed mower contest somewhere, 
and uh, uh, and uh, the winner gets something. I don't know. Good Lord. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Maybe a Gasparilla, whatever okay. it is. Yeah, a year's <laughs> supply of our lifetime supply of Gasparilla. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll go to that game. And actually, when I woke up this morning at 5 a.m., as I always do, I was on USF side, and for some reason, uh, through osmosis or whatever it was, uh, the the uh, I saw those six straight losses, and Marshall just looked a lot better. And as the day went on, and although their offense is 110th, their defense is actually 13th in the country. And USF, I don't know if this is a plus or a minus. I know it's a home game, but uh, they, they uh, their offensive quarter moved on to some place, maybe McNeese State or something. But I'm going to grab a. Uh, the three point uh, minus three for Marshall. I'm using these lies, by the way, Jeffrey from Vegas Insider a half hour ago. So this is the best I can do. Okay. Marshall minus three, uh, and I'm going to take Marshall by six. All right, Jeffrey. I'm going to also take Marshall minus. Well, I have it on two and a half. If you say three, I'd lay the three anyway. Um, I'm kind of with you. South Florida was kind of like a kind of like a hit and miss. I, it's not a team that I particularly watch, and to me, they kind of let down the state of Florida. I mean, last year they had all these solid squads: South Florida and, and uh, Central Florida. Yeah. Um, I think Marshall is just a better team, and you know, especially defensively, they they kind of, in a sense, dominated their their conference. But again, that's you know, it's a different play when you're when you're playing in a you know in a bigger field, I guess. But I'm still going to take Marshall minus the two and a half or three or whatever it is. All right. Yeah, so far on track with each other. All right, we've got Friday, December 21st, the Bahamas Bowl, which, uh, listen, I don't care uh, who I am. If uh, I've got a choice of uh, playing somewhere, some godforsaken part of the country in the wintertime, I'm going to this one <laughs> no matter what, and I'm having a grand old time. Yeah, yeah still well, kind of getting a little bit of feedback. Watch it on TV. Um, Toledo is a... Uh, uh, very good offensive team. They're on their second quarterback, and Peters, the second quarterback, has been pretty much as good as the other one. But I like FF, F, FIU plus four and a half. Uh, I got Toledo winning by two, but FIU plus four and a half. FIU has a better offense that a lot of people give them credit for in their mid-range stop unit, and I think they can at least cover the four and a half, but I do have Toledo winning by two. Um, I actually like for Florida International in this game. Um, I actually like them for the year. I mean, they they were a pretty solid squad. But I think Toledo kind of always has that um, something to prove when it comes to the bowl games. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out and say that uh, Toledo wins this game and covers. So there's our first discrepancy. Discrepancy they're never a discrepancy. They're just a disagreement. Oh, okay. All right. The Jared Birmingham Bowl is up next. No, it isn't. Bahamas. Now we've got the uh, no, Idaho the Potato, Potato Bowl. Bowl. Here's another side note. How would you like to have a blue field in Western Michigan is coming out with their bowl uniforms total brown? <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Get the Excedrin. Anyway, um... I can't give anybody, I uh, can't give uh, enough points to not take uh, Western Michigan. All right, I, BYU plus 12 or what is it now? Yeah, plus 12, actually 12 and a half maybe. But uh, I cannot uh, uh, fathom BYU winning by 12 and a half points, even though Western Michigan lost their quarterback. They still can run. Their defense was a sieve, but I just, I'll take the 12, 12 and a half, and uh, I'll take BYU to win by seven. Well, that's almost my exact sentiments. I actually have um, Western Michigan plus the points, and then with BYU winning the game, I um, I'm just really not impressed with BYU, and I don't understand really why that they won't join. Like they they continue to be independent. I know that they tried to get into our conference, the the WAC. Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, the Mountain, Mountain West, West. Yeah. But we denied them because of the their religious you know, where they can't play on certain days or whatever. But I think that what that does is it kind of takes away from BYU. And, you know, while we're talking about it, shout out to UNLV basketball beating UNLV or beating BYU with a fall away three-pointer on Saturday. It was pretty nice. Well done. Yeah. 
So I'm with, I'm right with you, George. I have uh, BYU winning the game. Actually, and... if you really want to know why they're not in the conference, it goes back to the the uh, early stages of the Mormons when uh, Brigham Young told his his people go out and find find us clergymen, uh, clergy people, and uh, come in. Uh, bring them, bring them anywhere you want, but bring them young. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, let me, let me, uh, oh, just, well. just uh, a little bit dope. It's okay. You know, it's, I have half of my brain left. Uh, anyway. Oh, I love that. Well done. <laughs> all right, we've got, move on to Saturday, the 22nd, and the Birmingham Bowl. Yes. A real knock in the ribs with Memphis. They lost their Henderson guy, who's one of the better unknown running backs in the country, but they have a backup who's a thousand yard rusher also yep. named uh, Taylor. Uh, Wake Forest, I just uh, can't really put my faith in them. I mean, they last week they won, I think, 58-7 to against Duke, but they haven't been doing very well up to that day, so I'm going to still stick with Memphis minus three and a half as a value pick. I got Memphis to win by ten. Okay. Their offense is ranked eighth. Obviously, is not as good without Henderson, but I think they'll still be able to put it together. Okay, I have uh, Memphis minus three and a half. Was it three and a half still? I think that's what I have. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I have Memphis minus three and a half in that game as well, and and that team can rush the ball. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they got two. For we're well, not going into this game, but they got two solid running backs. Um, I'm just really not impressed with Wake Forest. I think outside of uh, Clemson, the ACC is pretty weak. And um, I won't be taking any of those games, ex- those teams except Clemson. <laughs> so they're all going down. All right. Well, we'll talk about that on the side, buddy. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Next up, we've got the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Houston against Army. Yes. Uh, in this game, I, uh, I believe Army's going to win. Oliver for Houston out. King, uh, the quarterback, out. But they do have a semi-home game because it's in Houston. Army's just been so – I mean, they should have really knocked off Oklahoma, and I was praying for it, but it didn't happen. You and me both. uh, But um, I'm going to take Army by four, and I I couldn't tell you why I'm taking Houston plus four and a half, just probably because of the home thing. And um, Army just does one thing. Uh, well, and uh, but they're so good. But their special teams is is just hurts them week after week. 123rd. So I'm going to hope that the uh, uh, Army to win, but only by four, not four and a half. Um. So it's up to four and a half. I actually have Army here at three and a half. I don't like that four and a half. When it gets to from four, four and a half to five, I just. Yeah. Can, I, I just refuse to touch games like I don't even really like three and a half. But if it's four, four and a half, and five, I don't bet it at all. Actually, um, actually, on the the thing I'm watching it because I want to. I don't know the name of these bowls. I know the who's playing, but it's up in, on this site at five. Army. But, oh, well, but it's all over the place. Well, I think that Army's going to have to <clears throat> put up some points to win this game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they can. So I think um, I think they're going to win the game. I don't. Again, I don't like that number, but uh, at three and a half, I would take it. At anything higher than that, I probably wouldn't. But since I already um, have my notes here that it's circled, I'm going to go ahead and take the Army minus three and a half okay. or, or four and a half or whatever the hell it is. That's why God made erasers, buddy. Yeah, I should have bought a pencil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Next up, we've got the Dollar General Bowl. Buffalo against Troy. Yes, Dollar General Bowl, Buffalo, Troy. uh Tight, tight game. Both of them are. Uh, Buffalo's embarrassed by their their uh, MAC uh, finals that they didn't get the uh, the, the bid. Troy is at uh, semi home. Uh, their second string quarterback not as good as Barker was. Uh, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a field goal game, and I think Buffalo wins by three. The line that I got is uh, Buffalo uh, minus one and a half. Yeah, I see it down to one and a half as well, and. Uh the over-under at um, 53 and a half. I loved Buffalo most of the season. You were right in that last game, though. I mean, they just could not put it together. And I just really – that was, like, the worst game that I think that I saw them play the whole year. And It was only a, bit, uh, it was only a quarter and a half that they played bad. It was not the – they, they, well, anyway, yes, they stuck. Yeah, I mean, with, 
with the exception, I mean, they, I, I was comparing it to the other games that I had watched them play, but I still haven't went in this game. Troy is a solid team. Yes, they are. Um, but I do see, uh, this is probably going to be a good game and you're right in saying it's probably going to feel a goal game, but, um, I have Buffalo minus two or one and a half and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Next we have the SoFi Hawaii Bowl. Hawaii, uh, obviously a home game for them against Louisiana Tech. Raging Cajuns. Flip a coin. Uh, the line is minus one. I have the game dead even, but I'm not going to uh, uh, go against the home team. I think they go out there and uh, the other, especially you're in Louisiana, you're out there, and I won't even mention some of the stuff that's going on for a week. I don't think they give a rat's ass as far as what, what they're doing on the field, and I'll take Hawaii minus one. Uh, and Hawaii to win by one, so that's about it. Well, my opinion about these games, especially when they're when you're playing them in Hawaii, is that a lot of these young guys have never been to Hawaii, you know. So it becomes like more of like a sightseeing and and you know that type of stuff. So well, it's kind of a little bit harder, yeah. yeah, a little bit harder <laughs> to get focused on, you know, what happens. Um, you know, Hawaii obviously never leaving the island to play this game, so I'm leaning towards Hawaii myself. You remember your younger years? I do. I've never been to Hawaii. Oh, I, I, I'm talking just Cleveland. That worked uh, fine. All <laughs> right. Okay. We've got. Uh, we're now off to Wednesday, December 26, and uh, we've got the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl, Boston College and Boise State. I think this is a massacre. Uh, this is. I. I don't usually have this. This is a. Uh, uh, 17 star Boise State minus two and a half I have them winning by 13 uh, they have the better offense Boston College does have a nice defense both teams suck at, at special teams but I just think uh, Boise it will be ready for this one and, Bo- and it's you know, I just think they're going to just uh, route them by 13 okay Jeffrey um, I when I look through this uh I actually didn't see the line on this game until I just looked at this piece of paper, and I was shocked that it was three. I was like, I couldn't even circle it fast enough. <laughs> you know, I, I watched Boise play a couple times this year, you know, obviously with them being in the Mountain West. Um, you get their games a lot out here. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? They're, they're a solid program on both sides of the ball. Um, Boston College is like the same. You know, if they can keep the game in a low-scoring game, they have a better chance. I don't think that that's going to be the case here. I think Boise uh, runs away with this game as well. Okay. And right. Dylan's been hurt quite a bit, although he's going to play. But who knows what how uh, 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 him as a running back is going to. If you have a little injury, it still can be bad playing on it. So anyway. All right. All right. Next up, we've got the Quick Lane Bowl, Minnesota oh, Lane and Georgia Bowl, Tech. Huh? Okay. I'm. Uh, let's see. Minnesota still hasn't announced. If I, and Jeffrey, you would know this more than I do. Minnesota still hasn't announced. took Minnesota plus points. I don't know who those people are that are well, going to be missing. they announced it. That's why. It's like, uh, what, that's, what is this Belichick? Is this flick guy like Belichick? That's just, you know, it's, uh, he got a nice contract, though, so, you know, he probably is very happy. Well, I mean, when you look at Minnesota, I mean, they're a 6-6 six and six team, but they play on the the difficult side of the, of the Big Ten schedule. So I think that they're, they could be better – then their record record indicates you know just because yeah. of the the who they have to play there was a point at the season that whoever georgia tech played i bet mm-hmm. you know because they were like consistently not covering the spread and that was the reason why i'm leaning towards the six points and again i don't know who these suspensions are going to be so you know obviously if you're watching the show thinking about taking anything make sure you know that you know it's not a major player but me just looking at this by with the eye I think Minnesota covers the six points, but Georgia Tech wins. Donbest.com. One of the, we used to work there, me and Bill, one of the best uh, injury reports uh, that, that is out. Just hit hit, uh, hit the, uh, whatever they call that, NCAA, hit injuries, and the 
ones in red are the important ones, and they do a good job. Excellent. All right. Shout out to Don Best. We'll next. S- send them an invoice for that one. <laughs> uh, next, we have one of my favorite snacks, the cheese it Bowl. Uh, this is going to be Cal against TCU. Oh, I had a joke about that, but we'll leave that for, uh, Come on, for man. a beer sometime. Cheese All right, so it. This one was, uh, I had California pretty much even going in, and then I just realized that uh, uh, the offense, they're even worse than TCU's offense. They're 121st. Both teams have fantastic defenses, and uh, I'm just going to lay, I'm going to, it's a pick em game in my, uh, in, in, at Vegas Insider. I'm taking TCU to win by two, and I wouldn't be surprised either way uh, if I lose this one. No sleep has been lost. <laughs> yeah. Um, under 39 and a half, that's unusual for college, but I don't know if they can go over 39 and a half, both of them together. That's... <laughs> well, I have a, uh, I have an arrow down with like five circles on it. So, um, I agree well, with you. Did you see him put that there after I said that? Or? Was it before or after he said that? Okay. Uh, right. I'm just asking Bill because he's actually looking at my papers right here. So, I know. I know. Um, no, I uh, I don't like either one of these teams, honestly. And yeah, I, right. I think that Cal, in my opinion, is weak. Um, I see TCU winning this game, but not. it won't be a blowout. You know, maybe three points, mm-hmm. seven points, something around there. I just don't think Cal's that good. I mean, playing in a Pac, Pac-12, this, in my opinion, there aren't very, there are very few good teams, you know, with the exception of Washington, Washington State. So. And UCLA. Uh, well. Uh, you you just three wait three and see, you know. I mean. Uh, uh, speaking of UCLA, you that, many years left, buddy. You get moved. <laughs> speaking of UCLA, <laughs> losing to Belmont the other day was probably a little bit of a tough shot. I uh, yeah. Belmont is a quality program. They are a pl- quality program, but a, a, a favored uh, UCLA team. Yeah. Well, there's no excuse for that sort of thing. So uh, you're going to basically end up taking TCU as well on this one, right? I'm going to take no, TCU. Said I kind of thought as much. No, I did not say California. I, oh. I think that they'll win by <laughs> at least seven points. Okay. All right. Well, listen, um, let's see. Let's take a quick uh, break here uh, for just a couple of minutes. Yeah. And uh, when we come back, we're going to get right back into it. Uh, And, uh, yeah, just a couple-minute of break. And uh, you're listening to Southern Nevada Sports News. It's our annual College Bowl pick show. We'll be right back. The golf store you've been waiting for is now open. Bob Allen Golf is ready to help you take your game to the next level. Bob Allen Golf is located at 6415 South Fort Apache, Las Vegas 89148. Choose your favorite clubs from our selection of Bridgestone, Callaway, Cleveland, XXIO, Srixon, Ping, Wilson, and more. We'll custom fit them in our state-of-the-art full-swing golf simulator. Come hang out with us and practice on our putting green to find out which club is perfect for you. Have your clubs repaired, reshafted, and regripped in our on-site tour shop. And talk about accessories. Guys and gals will feel comfortable and look sharp in the many sizes, colors, and options of apparel from Greg Norman, Black Clover, Under Armour, and more. The team at Bob Allen Golf takes your game as seriously as you do. Join our online family at BobAllenGolf.com and stop in the store to meet us. Remember, at Bob Allen Golf, your game is in the bag. This is Sergeant Tim Sutton with Heroes for Autism. An issue facing many families dealing with autism is wandering and elopement. Their loved one will just take off and disappear. Unfortunately, one of the number one causes for death under those circumstances is drowning. So please educate your family and and teach them about water safety. All right, we are back. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. And once again, I am still Bill Miller, co-host, along with... Jeff Belknap. And... Uh, I, I don't know who I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is the man, Jorge Mish. All right, guys, I'm sorry about the, the quick break, but we are back. And we are now up to Thursday, December 27th. It is the Independence Bowl. And uh, featuring Duke versus Temple. 
Well, my theory with uh, uh, leaving coaches was uh, was booted right out because the two leading, uh, uh, Appalachian State and uh, the other team, I can't remember, that played the first day, they lost their coach and they won too. So uh, that theory went down the drain. So all I keep seeing is 94 to 13. That's Duke's last two games, and those are not in favorable numbers. I will turn it around 13 to 94. Um, Russo, the quarterback at Temple, has been has come back, um, and he's going to play. Although he's injured and questionable, they have a nice running back. Uh, the line actually dropped to four, which I like because I happen to win by five, and I, I'm going to stick with Temple on that one, despite no coach. Well, um, Duke has a uh, pretty decent prospect at the quarterback. I think he's the same offensive and quarterback coach that uh, coached the, both the Manning brothers in at, uh, Tennessee. Well, one at well, Tennessee. I, I mean, that's at, a, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, but I still like um, Temple in this game. Um, Duke's defense is just is horrid. Um, Temple's been kind of a team that can kind of show up. And a team that's, like, usually pretty consistent when it comes towards the end of the year, like, you know, speaking of bowl, when they do make bowls. Right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take – I have it here at three and a half. Did you say it was up to five, you said? I says four, and it was at four and a half earlier this afternoon. It would drop down to four. Yeah, I think but that's – But once again, every, every place has a different uh, number. Yep. I like, I like Temple to win the game and to, to more than likely cover the game against Duke. All right. Next up, we've got the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, Miami and Wisconsin. The drum roll. Uh, Game played at Yankee Stadium. This is why I'd love to see the punks down south come up in the snow and play a uh, the uh, a game because Wisconsin plus three and a half. Uh, by second half, these guys in Miami, sorry, Mace, if you're listening, will be fri- uh, frigid. And uh, Wisconsin, even though they had the worst season of their of a, since I've been around, at least. Uh, Miami has a seventh defense, but when your hands are so cold, you won't know what the hell's going on. So we're going with Wisconsin straight up to win plus three and a half points. Beautiful. So, I mean, do we know? I mean, is that will that be a snow game? or No, it's a rain game, actually, but okay. I want to be a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, man, because if we know it's going to be a snow game, then that, that locks in my... Well, it's uh, it's... It's close to you know. It's it's New York is not uh, you know. You uh, bring uh, one of the boys up here and play uh, play in uh, in 12 degrees uh, for, uh, for the championship one year. See how they like it. No, I'm I'm it's completely never gonna happen. So don't worry about it. So I have marked Wisconsin plus four. Um, I just think again, you know, same thing I said about Minnesota. Wisconsin plays the on the on the tougher side of the Big Ten schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, they play quality opponents on a regular. Not saying. That Miami doesn't, but they are ACC, and I did say that I was going to go against all the ACC teams, and I'm going to stick to that. Okay. Um, so I do have actually Miami down winning the game. That's fine. But I think that it'll be by a very short margin, and I'm definitely, I definitely think Wisconsin plus four or three and a half or whatever it is is a good play. Bill, I'm going to tell you this: no matter what, if Wisconsin doesn't win this game, you don't have to pay me this week. You got it. <laughs> You heard it here, folks. Beautiful. Putting his salary on the line. I like okay. that. Is it double or nothing, or is it just <laughs> no, nothing no, or nothing? No, just leave it at where it is. Okay. All right, next up we have uh, one of these elongated names, the Academy Sports Outdoor Texas Bowl. And Outdoor Texas Bowl. Let's just say Texas Bowl. Baylor against Vandy. Yes, sir. Well, this game is a, is a uh, semi uh, Baylor home game, but I don't think it matters. Uh, I just uh, feel that uh, Vanderbilt, one of the more interesting, underrated team. Baylor's going to be missing Hurd, who used to be their running back. Now he's a receiver. He's not playing. It won't matter because I got Vanderbilt minus four, and I got them to win by 11 points. Very underrated team, oh, wow. a 6-6 six and six team. They're uh, they did very well in the uh, SEC. Well, they're in uh, a tough uh, conference, so. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I know that our east of the Mi- Mississippi, Quinn Campbell, will be happy to hear me say this. <laughs> Straight out of Nashville, Vanderbilt wins this game. Yeah, all right. Um, minus four. And, you know, Baylor is um, kind of turning the corner 
you know, coming off of those those years of oh yeah, they you got know, up to six, yeah, yeah, where where they've lost where they've lost their scholarships and lost their coach and did you know all that other stuff. Well, they were under the micro certainly under the microscope and right. for you know pretty, pretty good obvious reasons, yeah. definitely good reasons. But I just think you know, and I'll agree with what you both said. I mean, I think based upon the games that Vanderbilt played in the SEC, definitely underrated in at a, with a four point spread. I think that this is a game they could win. I like the fact that you you put this game at 11. I I kind of figured them to win about a touchdown, but I'm marking these games and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a parlay together when when I hear George throw these biggest ones out. So so far I got a three teamer. All right, and this game, Can folks, for you, I will I will absolutely pay you if it wins. All right, yeah, that's right. All right. For you guys and for you folks down there, uh, this is this game is on Thursday the twenty seventh at Houston Stadium where the uh, Texans play. Yeah. Right now, if you don't, if you're not busy, uh, there are f- almost five thousand tickets as low as five dollars. Five bucks available uh, for the. Uh, well, we the could put some action Academy on Academy Sports it. Outdoor Texas Bowl. We folks. could put some action on it uh, with our attendance five, with our five dollar <laughs> tickets and actually pay for our trip. And uh, hotel room and everything. Yeah, there you have it. Sorry, I can't go. Oh boy. Next up, we're on a Friday, December twenty eighth, and this is the Franklin American. I'm, I'm, yeah, Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. I think this might be the longest in Nashville, name. by the way. Yeah, in this the, one in Nashville. Yeah. And uh, Purdue and Auburn. So you're starting to I get to some to, of the blue uh, bloods I here. Auburn was, is going to mail this in because this is not where they like to be, but. Every year, this is the kind of bowls they're in, so uh, they're playing it. But uh, this time, I think they're going to win. They got the. Uh, it'll be their defense against uh, Purdue's offense. I know Purdue had their one moment of glory against certain Ohio State team, but then they lost a couple after that that they should have won. I'm going to take Auburn by four. The line right now that I have, well, it's there it's four, but it's I got it at three and a half. Um, I also have Auburn minus three and a half, and I think that the only reason why that we're not talking about Ohio State in the national the playoffs is because of this very emotional game that Purdue played. Yeah, terrible loss. That's uh, the worst loss. They've, I have no qualms that Ohio State didn't make it. I don't know who the hell thought that they were supposed. Well, to Well, I'm make saying it. if they would have won this game, oh, it's, then it's then, it's then they they would have easily been in there and. So what I'm saying is this was an emotional game because of the pregame and the cancer, the, you know, the, the player with cancer and everything. So it was kind of like an emotional thing. That, and Purdue just stepped up and played that day. So um, I think that they, they're they not as good, and I think that this line might be a little jaded because of that particular game. Um, but I also take I also like Auburn. And Auburn played a pretty solid schedule most of the, most of the games in the SEC. They, I mean, they got hammered a couple of times, but against good teams. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, next we've got Jeffrey, the Jeffrey. We're against each other because I'm going. I'm doing. I'm going to be sucked into the vacuum. Uh, uh, I. I am just. This is the. This is what. What do they call that? The. Uh, the sucker bet of the year, and I'm being sucked in as bad as everybody. I, I believe without Greer, they have uh, two passers, Low and Allison. I believe their names that have thrown. A uh, total of 10 passes. I know that's, I you know they're freshmen and stuff like that, but uh, I actually have Syracuse winning this game by eight points and wow. taking the plus one and a half. All right. This All is right. the Camping World Bowl, folks. Yes. In Orlando, Florida. Um, I'm going to stick to the, I, I just like Western Virginia and the way that they, they move the ball around. Um, they they run the ball kind of decently. And, um, you know, hopefully they can keep the ball away from Syracuse because that's what's going to take to win this game. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in a couple of games that I saw, you know, where I was expecting Syracuse to, like, kind of break off and go above, above and beyond, they did not do that. And that's the main reason why I'm going to stick with uh, Syracuse in this one. There's nothing wrong I mean, with that. Uh, back in – we have – we're going very well. Back in the 70s, uh, Lou Holtz was at Arkansas and half of his team got suspended. I'm serious. Half the team got suspended, and it went from one to 17 and a half. And I had the, I had it at the, I, I had Arkansas. I couldn't get off of it. They won the game by about 30 points. Yep. <laughs> well, you I mean, never know. The flip side of that is, like, you, there's those other guys are hungry to play, you know, so you just never – I mean, you put those guys on your team for a reason, and that's for that day. Yeah, yeah. that's it. All right, next up, the Valero Alamo Bowl. 
Oh. Iowa State and Washington State. The leech man. He's supposed to give a speech about uh, uh, <laughs> what's his face Custer at halftime, I guess. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. I don't know. You know, hey, it's a cheap entertainment. Um, <laughs> the only thing that sticks out is Washington. I mean, Iowa State. Campbell's done a great job. I don't want him for the Browns. I don't want him for anything. I didn't want him for Ohio State. He's nice where he's at. God bless him. Um, I believe Washington State still can beat him by nine with a three and a half uh, point spread. Um, I am not a big fan of betting against Iowa State because they seem to always, every time I bet against them, they seem to have their best games. Yeah, I mean, more more last year than this year yeah, where they pulled back, up back, a, back a couple big Oklahoma yeah. and yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I like Washington State's team. I mean, I think they're really solid. They played a good game against Washington. I mean, Washington is just real, a really solid team and a really good matchup in the Rose Bowl. We'll, we'll get to that one. Um, I like Washington State to, to win this game, um, although I wouldn't bet it myself. So if that's that being said, I like Washington State, but I'm not going to be putting my own money on I guess that's the best way to put it. I, I just don't like betting against Ohio or Iowa State. Bill, give him some money so he can bet it. Okay. Uh, well, so right. far I got a solid three teamer that someone's given me, so <laughs> okay. I might throw surgery. All right, we're at the Saturday, December 29th, the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl, Florida against Michigan. Dun dun dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun this is the dun, first dun. week that uh, that that uh, Harbaugh doesn't have to uh, throw away his underwear because Myers retired. Uh, so. It's a beautiful thing. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, but it's uh, he, he's anyway. I he's actually dominant. love Michigan this week because they're actually playing another team uh, that, and I I think Florida is overrated. I know they have the ninth. Well, they have a great. They actually have a great uh, off offense, defense, and special teams. But I think Michigan Michigan played the worst game I've ever seen. Not because Ohio State was so good. Ohio State's offense was was fantastic, but. Uh, they just didn't have it that day, and I don't know what the hell was. If they couldn't get emotionally up to that, I don't know what it was. It's just everything went wrong, and uh, it just blossomed. Um, actually, I thought, Jeffrey, when they got within, what did they have, two touchdowns real quick or something? Yeah, right before the close, half. I thought, oh, boy, here we go. And then, But they just didn't uh, They didn't put the foot on the neck. But uh, they're, they're a great team. I actually have them winning by 12 points at 7.5 point spot. Yeah, I, I also had Michigan win in that game. I mean, they match up well against Florida. They've uh -huh. they've actually played this exact same game probably, I don't know, maybe three times in the past four years or yeah. maybe five years or something like that. I mean, they, they seem to always match up against Florida. They played them in the, the 2017 home opener. They won that game. I just think that Michigan matches up well against Florida. That's the reason why I think they win the game. I do – I think it's going to be around 10 – that the win by, but don't be surprised if Florida makes this game close. Oh, um, I would, I, yeah, I, plus seven and a half. It's that doesn't sound bad either. But yeah. is Patterson coming back next year? You think? Well, I mean, he's he's talked about you know putting himself in the draft, and I mean, which could be a potentially good idea considering yeah. the other quarterbacks that could go in. Which you know he could get a first round draft pick, especially with the need of quarterbacks in the NFL right now. But. I mean, either way, I mean, I actually want him to leave. I know that sounds kind of crappy, but, like, we got McCaffrey, and I would, I'd would, i love to see this McCaffrey kid, you know, come okay. in and, and run Michigan next year. So, yeah. um, I guess uh, selfishly, I would I want him to leave. <laughs> but, um, okay, well, I would, let sure me he's not going to defriend you or whatever, unfriend you at Twitter. Yeah, whatever. he probably is not my friend anyway. So, okay. anyway, so I do want to talk about that Ohio State game. What, what, what Urban Meyer did in that game – which was impressive to me is they they isolated one of their cornerbacks on on uh, Michigan State and I can't think of his name right now I apologize but this they literally went at this kid ten plays in a row and they were just destroying him I mean it was like literally embarrassing what they were doing to this guy and it they so Harbaugh was kind of seeing it and and uh, Brown was seeing it so they flip him on the other side of the field and then they just went to that side. I mean, and it was like, it was disparaging watching this guy. I mean, almost wow. like literally at, at, at a couple points of the game, felt sorry for him because it's like eight-yard pass, 10-yard run, 15-yard pass. I mean, it was like 
they knew that this was the weak link of the Michigan defense, and they went at it, and they did exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. And I bet they, uh, the new coach had something to say in the because uh, he was pretty much the main guy at offense. Uh, so, uh, and I think he was a great pick for the team. Uh, they didn't lose many uh, draft guys or you know uh, prospects because they all liked this guy too. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and and honestly, you know, I did I did see that one of the five star wide receivers uh, decommitted from Michigan and is going to go to Alabama instead. And, you know, yeah, obviously you got, you got one guy that you, you did. He was at Michigan, went to, uh, uh, went to Alabama, then turned around and went back to Michigan today. So, Oh, he did go back. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I, I don't know what, whether that's the same one you're talking about. Yeah, it could, it could have been. They flipped. Yeah. Yes. They, they flipped. Well, I could tell you this when I, when I first saw the post, the Michigan fans were like brutalizing this young man, uh-huh. and I and I and I just got on there. Hey, man, best of luck to you because uh-huh. the thing is, I mean, you don't know what's what's happening with these with these young guys. You know, I nope. mean, they they're trying to put themselves in the best position. And if they don't think that Michigan is the the squad, then go somewhere else. You know, yeah. I mean, that's well, the way know, that I feel. I about know we're it. getting well, we're not getting too. But the the Harrison guy who Ohio State got today, it was between you and Penn State and, and Ohio State. He said he was totally uncommitted until he met Day, and he just fell in love with the guy. And then uh, he, his parents loved him. He said, that's it. Even though he's from Ohio, that helps too. But uh, sure. that was huge. Yeah, awesome. Okay. All right. I think we can get along easier, huh? <laughs> as long as they win. Yeah, uh, as long as we agree. Okay. All right, next <laughs> up, uh, also still on Saturday, December 29th, and this is the Belk Bowl. South Carolina and Virginia. All right. SEC, ACC, you know what I'm doing for. I'm going with that SEC. Uh, South Carolina, I was kind of surprised. Was it Muschamp or whatever his name? He got a new contract. I thought he was on a hot seat, but I guess he's – or was that – no. Yeah, that's him. Anyway, I think uh, uh, their special teams and everything are are doing well, and they're getting better and better – but uh, I got a minus five, and I got South Car- uh, South Carolina winning by ten in that game. Well, I'm gonna I'm on South Carolina minus four again. Another ACC team goes down. I'm just I'm telling you, they're they're all gonna lose. <laughs> and and when I first looked at it, I was thinking which one of these teams can win, and I can only see possibly two. But more than likely, just one. So I'm going to take uh, South Carolina minus four. I I like South Carolina, um, not to watch. I never like watching them play. They're just like, in my opinion, just one of the <laughs> boringest teams to watch. Coming to my one of my favorite games. All right, we've got the Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl, Arkansas State against Nevada. I leaned all week. To, to Nevada, and then at the end, I just couldn't pull the plug. Uh, Arkansas, Hanson, uh, kid, the quarterback, Arkansas State, is a uh, He's real good. unknown to the world. And uh, I have Arkansas State winning by five at a minus two or one and a half. I see Arkansas State minus one and a half. I like that game. And I initially, when I first saw the eye test, I actually circled Nevada. But um, playing common opponents... Arkansas State beat UNLV by 20. UNLV beat... Came back and beat Nevada. And beat Nevada. Yeah. Um, Nevada, their defense kind of cost them a couple games. This quarterback for Arkansas State can sling the ball. I, I like... I'm not sure if they won their division, but if they didn't... I Did App State win that division? They must have, right? Yeah, I'm not so sure. Arkansas State must come in second in that division, but I, I like Arkansas State here. Um, the temperature is going to be decent, you know, for both. Nevada's an improved team, but I'm going to go Arkansas State minus one and a half. Okay. All right. All right here we go. Uh, we're starting to get to that uh, that rare air now. The uh, Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Notre Dame against Clemson, number three against number two. The line I see just changed down to, what, uh, 13. Um I'm just going to do both of these, and you can talk for the rest of the time, Jeff. I got both of them uh, by 16 points, Alabama winning by 16 with minus 14, Clemson minus 13 at 16. Uh, just it's inevitable that these two are going to get the Oklahoma defense. I've never I've, I've never seen a, a college team that 
has such a terrible defense. Uh, I know it's the Big 12 or whatever whatever they call it, but they, they can't stop anybody. we got a great offense in this, but uh, Alabama can score with them, and they have the eighth best defense in the country, so i I got to go with that. Same way with Clemson. Clemson, uh, Notre Dame has the number four D. Clemson has the number one, supposedly, but Clemson has a, the seventh best offense. And we're going to have a fun national championship if that is the case. Oh, well, I was kind of looking. You might have it there, George. What What is the over-under with uh, Alabama? Uh, believe it or not, uh, it is not. Oh, wait a minute. I can go to another. Uh, just uh, 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 blow, bloviate a little bit there. Yeah. Well, got a lot of things going on over here. <laughs> we're almost to the end of the thing, and you got you got uh, a lot of minutes. No love for Notre Dame, huh? I have no love for Notre Dame at all, and I've, I've actually been saying that like for weeks. I don't think that this team deserves to be in the top four. I mean, I honestly personally think that if they didn't have the record that they have, that they wouldn't be there. Um, I don't think that or the name of the school wasn't Notre Dame. Well, I mean, they're they're obviously Not UCF. A, they're ABC, don't they? Own like half of ABC or something? I NBC. Mean, NBC. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they own like the network. I mean, obviously. So well, they the were. Network. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, you, so if they were UCF Dame, instead of Notre Dame. Fifty-five. No, not the not the Clemson game, the Alabama. Uh, and the Seventy-nine and a half. Seventy-nine and a half. Jeez. That that game, it might be seventy-nine and a half in the first half. Okay, so um, my I I wrote I wrote down my um. My first half bet, I put Clemson minus six, and could be six and a half. They've they covered all but two of those, and they were both at the end of the year. Alabama on the other side of that covered the first ten weeks in the first uh, half. Um, so I'm going to take Clemson. Clemson wins the game, I believe, by twenty points. Ooh. But. <laughs> Uh-oh. Clemson has a way of playing down to their opponent, and they've done it a couple the last couple games of the year. They're a much better team than Notre Dame. I I do think that they're going to dominate this game. I love the first half at minus six to the Oklahoma and Alabama game. Bill will tell you I actually gave Oklahoma as my national championship my sleeper before they actually made it into the four. The yes, final he did. four. Yes, he told me that. Uh, it kept me up for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so their offensive line got the offensive line of the year. They're obviously one of the better offenses. They got the Heisman Trophy player. Uh, they won't even be playing in the NFL. He'll be playing here in Las Vegas for the Oakland A's farm uh, system, the the Las Vegas A- Aviators, which I'm excited to see a Heisman Trophy player play minor league baseball. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah, that's going to be super cool. Um, I have Oklahoma covering uh, the 14 points in this game. I would love to see him win. Um, um, when I said that, the long shot, there was a long shot. It was 15-1, to 1, and I basically said they're, they have the best chance of actually making some money. Um, well, let's let's take these things one at a time, shall we? Okay, so I have Clemson. Yes. Okay, and then I'm going to take – Alabama is going to win this in, game. All right, hang on. I have to introduce these things, okay? Okay, well, I'm sorry. Otherwise, well, I No, I did it the same this, way this Jorge did it. clearly no did reason both. for me to be here. Ball. I mean, I, I could just simply go out in the lobby in a green room and just <laughs> chill and then listen to it. Uh, anyway, all right. So start. <laughs> we off, have start the over. Capital One. I think it's called the Orange Bowl. Yes. <laughs> okay. And one of these teams is Oklahoma, Oklahoma against uh, Al- Northern Alabama. No, Alabama University of Southern Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. All right. Number four and number one. Okay. So I'm gonna take. Alabama plus the 14 or Oklahoma plus the 14 points. I would love to see, and I might even throw like some long shot, crazy ticket on Oklahoma to win this game. Um, I think two is scheduled to, to play. I think that Georgia in a sense kind of exposed the defense for Alabama. And I'm, I've said it a hundred times that Alabama doesn't play anybody. They're playing an offense. It's, that's probably one of – well, I mean, they were rated the best offensive line this year. And and other people that can sw- score. Now, Indeed. Oklahoma's defense is basically like Swiss cheese in a sense. But they did play better against Texas the second time around. And I think it's probably because they played them twice. Yeah. That, that made a little bit of a difference. Um, but this – 
this uh, 79 and a half, I don't think is going to be a whole lot of problem in, unless this happens. So I'm going to lay this out here. They score 60 in the first half <laughs> between the two of them. And then nothing happens in the second half. I can almost see that happening. But anyways, I'm going to take Alabama to win the game. I'm going to take Oklahoma to cover. And I'm going to hope that Oklahoma wins the game. Either way, Clemson wins it all. They, it doesn't matter who they play. All right. The ACC, huh? That, I told you, there's one ECC team. That's it. So Clemson wins it all now. Clemson, yeah. Not- well, no, well, I'm saying Oklahoma. That was my long shot. Okay. But I've said it all year long that Clemson's the best team in the college bas- in college football. Okay. So you're taking Clemson to win it all. I thought it was Oklahoma. No, I said long shot, man. Oh, long shot. Long okay. shot. I was looking. I was looking at the spreads, and I I looked at all the teams that had a chance, okay, and I said Oklahoma has the best chance at fifteen to one. And then I went to the Bears, and I said the Bears one, two, three, are gonna are gonna win the. I and I still think now I'm even more secure that the Bears are gonna win. I put fifty bucks on the eight to one, and after they beat the Rams, I was like, <laughs> I like this team's defensive wins championships, and I cannot wait for uh, Trubisky. To, to hold that trophy, and I'm all the only person I'm gonna be thinking about is the guy on the other line on this phone talking about how this guy shouldn't even been drafted. Who? Well, I don't know. Who else is on the phone? I mean, we have more than one line going. <laughs> Trubisky? I don't know. No, the one I was uh, was was up your ass with was Allen. I never said about Trubisky. I don't know. Yeah, and and Allen just passed. Uh, um, what was it? Michael Vick for the most rushing yards in the season. Here's your way to your disabled list. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he's winning games. I mean, with the yeah, with the offensive yeah, line that's yeah, disabled. He's doing a great job. I mean, he beat the Lions. <laughs> 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 Which was troubling, you know. Well, I mean, they to, arguably to say the least. They prayed her one of the most guaranteed kickers misses a you know forty something yard kick that they could have won the game, but you know. It's in Buffalo. Yeah, sure. Oh, whatever. All right, Jorge. All right, we got uh, eleven left. Jorge, well, we we got and we've got time. We got thirty-five minutes. That's good. Yeah, we're fine. All right, you, and so you're going with Alabama. Who? You? Yeah, he already did. Minus, minus sixteen. Minus fourteen, or, winning by sixteen. Yeah. Clemson minus thirteen, winning by sixteen. All right. There you go. And uh, winning it all. Oh, I'm not. Oh, you want me to do that? No, you not know, never. No. Well, just in case end, you don't got, come back on, I if got, they. Uh, no, I got it. I got Alabama to win by four against Clemson. Okay. Got what it. What about if Alabama? What if Clemson plays Oklahoma? Just I'll give you Clemson by about a hundred. By the way, ten <laughs> ten nothing uh, Ohio Bobcats. Of course. All right. Monday, December thirty first, uh, the Military Bowl, Cincinnati against Virginia Tech. Yes, sir. This is a uh, game that uh, Cincinnati's really improved to 10-2. and two. They have the 19th best defense. Vatek has had the injury-prone year and, and uh, really needed the last couple games to get into it. But I'll take Cincinnati to win by three, but I'm going to still take Vatek plus five and a half on that one. Okay. I actually have Cincinnati winning and covering a game that I would not bet because of the, of the five points. But um, I do agree that uh, Cincinnati is a much better team. The games that they did lose um, were winnable games. But, you know, they, this is a this is one of the better opponents that they're playing. But we know where Virginia Tech is from, so I'm taking Cincinnati. That game, one game that Cincinnati lost to Temple in overtime, that never should have went there. I don't know what. They just collapsed in the last couple minutes of yep. that game. That was ridiculous. Yep, absolutely agree. All right. All right, we've got the uh, Hyundai Sun Bowl. Stanford against Pitt. Very interesting in this matchup because I thought I thought possibly uh, Love's uh, announcement the other day, maybe it hasn't uh, affected the point spread because it's so away, but Love is not playing in the bowl because he's getting ready, but then I looked at his stats and he's really been injured and I know four and a half sounds good, but for Love that's a terrible year, and I know his, his offensive line has uh, has uh, let him down pretty well, but uh, I think Costello uh, uh, Pittsburgh, I don't know how the hell in the middle of the year they did what they did, but uh, they went back to the form that I'm used to um, near the end of the year, and uh, the, I think Costello and his crew can 
uh, beat them by 10 with a six point spot. So, hold on. So, you think that Pittsburgh? No, I said Stanford. Stanford, like Stanford can win by 10. Yeah. Minus six, Stanford. <clears throat> I'm going to go again with common opponents. And I believe that uh, Pittsburgh played a better game against Notre Dame than Stanford did. Mm-hmm. With Love being out, I think that Stanford wins this game, but I do think that Pittsburgh covers the points. So I'm going to go Stanford to win and Pittsburgh to cover. Yes, ACC. All right. Hold on. Stanford wins. I understand. Okay. We're not going point spreads. I mean, I got a couple of ACC that cover a point spread. I understand. All right. We've got the Red Box Bowl, Michigan State against Oregon. The Red Box what? Red Box Red Bowl. Red Box Bowl. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, that Michigan State, uh, all defense, Oregon, pretty much all offense. But Michigan State just can't move the ball at all. Uh the best thing that happens to them is that Oregon special teams is like 103, and their defense is second best in the country. But uh, I can't put faith in Michigan State. I'd love to. Trust me, I would. But I got Oregon minus three and Oregon to win by six. Um, I am a huge fan of Michigan State's defense. I do agree with the offensive side. I got Oregon winning this game and covering the spread. And, and I do, and I do think that this is going to be a good game. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, probably one of the better bowl games. But I mean, I don't know Mi- Michigan. St- there, Jeffrey, but I really get disgusted watching sixty-three to fifty-eight. Uh, that just a, a one stop would would really make it nice. Uh, that's all. Well, I mean, and I would much. Penalties. Too I'd many much. Penalties. I'd much rather watch sixty-three to fifty-eight than seventeen to fourteen. I mean, that's twelve really, to nine. Yeah, me personally, but. <laughs> Um, I do think that Michigan State's um, going to play some some good defense, and they, it might slow down Oregon in this game. I just don't think Michigan State has the weapons, nor do they play up. I mean, the the, the games that I expected Michigan State to, to come out and play, which really started at the beginning of the season because they started out against Utah State. They were a big favorite. Utah State obviously gave them a game, and um, Utah State ended up being one of the better teams – you know, on the on the West Coast, they already won their bowl game. But, um, yeah, that's what it is. They massacred the All other right. team. Yeah. All right, next up we've got the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Missouri against Oklahoma State. All right here, Missouri. Nice story with them, 8-4 and four with their, their quarterback. Oklahoma State, uh, another good story with a walk-on, uh, but that's the system. One's 15th in offense. The other team is 10th. Uh, the key missing uh, part is Hill for Oklahoma State. Their best running back is going to be out. Uh, that pushed me over the hump and into number uh, into Missouri winning minus 8 by 9 points. I also have a Missouri minus 9. Uh, I'm sorry, 8. Um, Oklahoma State just really hasn't shown me that they can they, they can be in games, but it the games, a couple of games that I watched with Oklahoma State, they couldn't execute on the plays that they needed to execute. I think that that's going to be a little bit do- tougher against uh, a Missouri team that's able to score. Um, I have a I have an arrow up on this, which basically is you know the over um, seventy four. Yeah, and I don't think that that that's going to be any issue. I mean, both of these teams sling the ball around a lot, so um, I do like that game to go over, and I like Missouri minus eight. All it's right. 9 o'clock. Okay, next up we've got the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Northwestern against Utah. I want so bad to go with Northwestern because they're such a nice uh, underdog school to go with. They play hard all the time. Fitzgerald is uh, Fitzpatrick, whatever his name is, one of the two. But their offense, a 103 against a 22 defense. I just love Utah's defense. And if they didn't get injured... Uh, their quarterback and their running back didn't get injured. I think they could have taken the Pac-12. Luckily, Huntley, the quarterback, is available for the game, won't start, but he'll, he's going to play some, but they're still going to miss uh, Moss, the, the running back. But I still think Utah, minus seven, is the play because I got him going by 11. Yep. 
I also like Utah, <clears throat> and mainly because of their defense. But yeah, yeah. you know, I um, I remember one week. It was probably uh, I don't know exactly. It was like week eight or nine. I gave Utah as my play of the week. And when I saw the game, they lost the game. They were laying uh, two and a half points, and they lost the game straight out. I believe it was against Arizona State. And I was shocked because they lost the game by like 14 points. And then I looked back, and that both the running back and the quarterback got knocked out of that yeah. game. And if you look, the, there's very few running – well, maybe there is. I don't know. I don't follow that much. But Moss had over, I think, like 12 touchdowns at the time he got hurt. And it was not not really late in the year, It, but it was uh, – that's strong. Add that on the quarterback, who's a running, running and passing quarterback. Uh, yeah, you lose two of them in that game. That's just no, you it was, just yeah. chuck it up as a uh, bad experience and yeah. go to the next one. That's all. Yeah, it was you definitely do done. Wrong. But I like Utah to win this game. I think they win pretty easily. And that, and that's not a shot against Northwestern. I mean, they won their no. side of the Big Ten, which is difficult enough. You know, obviously they had to play Ohio State, a, a way better Ohio State uh, team in the championship. But, um, you know, they have heart. You know, they had Michigan down in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, they, they've shown that they can go out and play. So it's going to take an effort for uh, Utah, but I think Utah wins this game by seven. All right. And uh, next one up, we've got the Tax Layer Gator Bowl, North Carolina State against Texas A&M. Wow. It's four and – well, wow, this line says six and a half. But I, oh, yeah, it is six and a half. I'm going to take Texas A&M to win the game because their offenses are basically the same. NC State, their passing offense is 21 against 19. Uh, but I just, for some reason, I like Finley better than, what's his name, Mond, is that it, M-O-N-D? Yeah. For Texas A&M, I just like him a little bit better, so I think six and a half is a little bit high to give against NC State. Uh, so I got Texas A&M winning by five, but uh, NC State getting the six and a half is my pick. Um, I'm obviously going to take the SEC team. I mean, I'm sorry, the Big 12 team against the AC crappy crap, whatever they call. Um, Boy, the, when you hold a grudge, you hold it. For I'm not. I'm not even holding a grudge. I'm just basically <laughs> saying, like, when I look at these teams, I don't. When uh, I first looked at the matchups, I. <laughs> this is the one thing. This is one way I've done it for years. Is I look at the matchups, no matter who the team is. So I look at what team is playing what team. So, I, you know, for example, like Michigan State against Oregon, I look at Big Ten versus Big 12. And I, and I look at that first, and then uh, I, okay. I, I look at the conference first, and then I look at the team. So okay. every time I, when I went through these games, I looked at the teams, the ACC teams were playing, and I'm like, none of these teams are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's and it's terrible, but it's like the way that they're mat they, they were matched up is really they were just mismatch. So I think A and M wins this game. I wouldn't be surprised actually if uh, NC State covers the spread, but I I don't see honestly. I probably wouldn't bet this game, but if I did bet it, I would definitely take A and M minus the six points. All right. And, and so far, I have one team, one ACC team winning. Okay. All right, Tuesday. You don't have Georgia Tech winning? I don't. I actually have – well, I did. I have Georgia Tech winning. And Clemson. And Clemson, yeah. So, I have Georgia Tech winning, but uh, Minnesota covering the points in that game. Check that pick there, uh, Billy. <laughs> He's, it's right here, right in front of him. right here. Okay, Tuesday, New Year's Day, the Outback Bowl. Well, Mississippi State this. against Iowa. Okay. Um, it's Iowa's defense against uh, Mississippi State's defense and offense. Uh, the only trip up is Michigan or Michigan State. Mississippi State's uh, special teams are 106, but their defense will cover up uh, for Iowa's lack of offense. And I got Mississippi State by 10 on a minus 7. All right. I have Mississippi State to win the game, Iowa plus the points. No particular reason. I just think, you know, again, I went with the matchups here. I think Mississippi State's a solid team. Um, I do think that they got exposed against Alabama as far as their defense goes. And anytime any good coaching staff will will grab that film and found out, find out how Alabama was able to do the things that they did and hopefully be able to replicate it. I mean, obviously, uh, Iowa doesn't have the offensive weapons that, that Alabama, Alabama does. Yeah. 
But I do think that they have enough to cover the points. I kind of made this game about a three to four point spread. So um, I, th- I just think Iowa plus seven is a good play, but Mississippi State wins the game. Throw it on your money line parlay. All right. Next up, the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. LSU against uh, UCF. 2018 National Champions. Most people are, are probably heading to LA, LSU's side because of their Milton being uh, injured. But uh, the gentleman who picked up the, I believe, Lowe is his name, or Mac, I'm sorry, Mac, um, did a quite a good job for the new Boise State. Uh, of the uh, uh, 2005th or 10s, whatever. I think USC is a uh, better team than people give credit for. LSU today, uh, the Big Mac who plays the defensive tackle for LSU, don't know his name, but he's going in the draft, and he's going out there. He's already out on the plane, but he's not playing because he don't want to exert himself. Uh, a lot of people from LSU not playing. I'm going to take LSU by two, but I really believe uh, the seven, it went. It dropped from seven to seven or seven and a half to seven. I'm going to take you at UCF plus seven, even with the second string quarterback. Okay. Um, I don't know how you can go against the national champion from last year and 20 game winning streak team. But I'm with you on that one. I, I do think that this is a tough matchup against UCF. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of, in a sense, glad that they matched up against a solid program like LSU because that will, in a sense, kind of silence the critics. You know, they – now, well, if they, they win this – last year. Right. No, I'm not saying that they don't play tough teams. But uh, you're talking year. about a, a team that's won over 20 games in a row, which sure. the, is the only team that has that streak. In looking at, you know, the critics will say, oh, well, you know, they don't even get a chance. They're only the eight. They, you know, went undefeated two years in a row. That's why I'm glad this matchup is here because this matchup will basically say if they win this game, they people are going to have to take them a little bit more seriously. They deserve a shot. Yeah. At I least mean, an invite to them. Or, again, if you can't give them an invitation and you know that year after year after year this is probably going to happen then you need to fix the system yeah 2020 I, i'm predicting in uh, right now another paycheck you don't have to send me uh that they'll get up to eight by I, 2020 i said that from the very beginning when they were talking about doing a playoff system i i felt that eight was a solid number because it basically is going to get there are there are eight teams basically that can win a national championship yeah. You know, like, even though that, say, on any given day, Ohio State can beat any one of these teams. Uh, Michigan could potentially beat some of these teams. So to to give them an opportunity, I mean, when we look back at Boise State, when they were, you know, being dominant, you know, they, they never even had an opportunity because of that. Obviously, with uh, UCF being the eighth seed, they would have an opportunity. Yes, they would have had to play Alabama in the first round. But th- this is the best way to look at it. Even if it was an eight-team playoff, UCF is not beating Alabama if they can't beat at least LSU. So this, this to me is like, if they can win this game, gives your theory of it being 2020 just more solid. Because it, it basically says, well, here's an eight-team that went in there and beat a solid LSU team. Now, with LSU... Backup QB. LSU, yeah, with a backup QB, but they know, you know, somebody that knows the system. He has been on the team for a couple of no, years. I'm not so. saying he isn't, but you know, a difference on the field. It looks a little different when somebody's chasing you that's 411 pounds. Absolutely. So I like uh, UCF plus the points. LSU to win the game. Last game of LSU without Cardell Thomas. Cannot wait to see this guy, this young man, play. He's been on our show a couple times. A lineman for for LSU. Really looking forward to seeing. Some some new uh, players on LSU. All right. Next up, we've got the Citrus Bowl, Kentucky against Penn State. What's VRBO mean? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Burbo. Yeah. The VRBO Citrus Bowl. So, like somebody that paid for it. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going with the Big Ten here. Uh, Kentucky has, has baffled me all year, but I give them credit. They've done everything defensively, but their offense doesn't doesn't really uh, get me all happy. But Penn State, uh, I, 
weird year. I don't know. The, uh, actually, the quarterback played worse than he did last year. But uh, I'm going to give him. I'm going to take the six, give him the six and a half points, and go with Penn State by seven. Nice. Well, I'm going to take the Big Ten as well um, to win the game. But I do think Kentucky is good enough to keep this game close. Yes. Um, I do. I watched the the entire Michigan Penn State game. Um, Penn State has some serious holes. If the if the if if the there can be pressure on the quarterback, he kind of gets a little bit out of rhythm, and I think that um, ten is, or I'm sorry, uh, Kentucky is good enough to actually pressure the quarterback. They are down a couple starters on defense, but they you know this kid uh, Josh Allen, I know one of your favorite names, um, the linebacker for uh, for Kentucky is is solid. One of the top ones. Yeah, so I mean this guy can he wreaks havoc basically on on the on the def- defensive side of the ball. I think he's going to wreak a little bit of havoc in to Penn State. That's going to be enough to keep the game close. Big Ten wins. Big Penn State wins. All right. Okay, we've got the uh, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. This should be a fun game. Washington against Ohio State. I'll save my breath with this one. Uh, no, but no, not one player from Ohio State who's graduating or leaving early is not playing in this game. They all out of honor to the uh, to Meyer are playing this. Uh, minus, uh, what is it, minus six and a half. Uh, I got Ohio State winning by ten. Case closed. Wait, Bosa's playing? Bosa, Bosa oh. wasn't playing after the fourth I'm, I'm just saying, you said no. You said nobody. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jesus that's a Christ. one buddy you at should, least. You should drink with uh, <laughs> Gary Lewis. That's a buddy. <laughs> seven and fucking one, pardon my language, with him, and he'd ask you why you lost the one game. Oh, uh, no, it's, so it's a one you buddy. My nerve on that one. Bosa hasn't played. He doesn't even remember what the fuck Ohio State's about. <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. Yeah, ble- you can believe it. You can say that anyway. We don't care. Yeah, well, screw, screw. Uh, political correctness is the reason this damn country's a piece of shit. Now. <laughs> Let's go. You got me. And those buddy. one buddies. <laughs> I got 17 more minutes, and don't start. <laughs> those one buddies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I'm, let me tell you this right now. The way that Ohio State played against Michigan, they literally could have beat anyone that day. And I'm, and I'm not saying that because their offense played well. They had a they were literally on a mission to do everything that they could to stop Michigan from going to the playoffs. And that's exactly what they did. And if they show up with that same tor- type of enthusiasm, yeah. they win this game by 21 pl- points or more. I believe that, like with Urban Meyer leaving, and and like I'm on the fence about it because I always thought he was a great coach. I liked him a lot more when he was in Florida. When he came to Ohio State, I was like, "Crap, I cannot, I can't stand this guy anymore." <laughs> but I've grown, George. I've grown, and now I don't get upset anymore when Ohio State wins. I, I look at the talent of this team, and there's there's talent all over the field for Ohio State. Washington's a solid program. Um, I kind of figured this game to be a, a little bit of a bigger spread, actually. I kind of thought that it would be maybe be like an eight and a half. But to see it at six and a half, I think that um, Washington has the ability to keep the game close. But again, I look, I do my matchups just like I do with all the other games. I think the Big Ten is a better conference in the Pac-12. So anytime that they play each, against each other, I'm always going to take the Big Ten, especially when you're talking about Arguably, what if, the, what if the line was? What if Bose has played the whole year? What the line would be now? Oh, uh, it would be more than ten, probably. Okay, thank you. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank but you know, and and obviously, obviously, you know, Bose is uh, probably top five pick. You know, so you can say whatever you want about the kid, and you know, he did what he has to do, and you know, that that's where um, the paying the guys, the paying the players, and everything really comes in. Because if this guy was being paid at least something. You know, through the, the the college, and he's obviously making money for the university. And when you talk about, you know, teams that make money, Ohio State has actually got the one of the biggest payroll. I mean, the the biggest revenue streams of any team in the, in the, and that includes like NFL teams. They literally make more money than the some of these NFL teams. So when you look at you know schools like that, they're making so much money with their football programs, and they want these guys to go out there and risk their future. That's why I don't like. I don't mind guys like Bosa that sitting out. I mean, how he's looking your, out. How much a year does a college education cost now? Well, I mean, how, how much, much does it cost? Does a college education cost. How much does it cost the college, though? I mean, so if you look at what it really costs the college, not nearly as much as they charge. These universities charge too much money to begin with, 
and and then they want to qualify it by saying, "Oh, wow, you get a college education." Yeah. Statistics prove that these that most of these college athletes don't use their college out afterwards. That's why when you look at what they're majoring, they'll say communications. Does that mean they're going to be a producer or they're going to be a talk show host? No. That means they're taking the easiest classes that they possibly can so they can play football. So if that's what they're going to do, you should get, you should be paying them to do Which that. Which is about 1% of the, of the people that uh, leave the school that get that uh, stay in any, any uh, NFL team for more than an hour. That, exactly. So you I mean most of them should be co- should be conscious more of that and actually getting their degree and, and you know getting a business degree and, and and afterwards going for their for their masters in business and and actually doing something with you know when they, with that first check that they get those guys that actually make it. You know the majority of these guys aren't going to make it anyway, you know. Might as well pay them. That's my point. Anyways, next the, Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl. The All-State Sugar Bowl, 15, Texas against number five, Georgia. Georgia has the third best offense, 16th best defense. Uh, I'm just going to go with a theory, and I can't read people's minds. I don't think they they think they should be in the final four. I don't think their head is in it, but they'll probably they'll win by 12. But I think Texas, now the line's moved up to 13, they're going to sneak under the uh, and, uh, and cover Maybe a backdoor or something in that game. And that's how it wrote. That's a wrap. Um, I love Georgia in this game. Um, when I say I love them, I mean they're a much better team. I think that Texas, um, you know, played really well in a couple of games, but kind of just fell short in the games that it, it was important. I've never really seen a team completely fall apart like Georgia did in, in that last couple drives against Alabama. Um, I personally, this is just me personally, saw a lot of questionable no calls at the end of that game. And I guess you can look at it however you want. Yeah. But there was a there was a clear face mask, you know, on the quarterback. There was a hit to the head by Alabama on, on a different play. There was pass interference on at least two different plays. And it was like, no, like the officials couldn't even see any of this stuff was going on. I mean, there was one play where like, oh, that was a questionable call. And the guy like literally was holding down the guy's left arm, you know, it like throwing it towards the end zone. And they're like, oh, that was questionable no call. No, that's not a questionable that's no, no call. call. That's like that's, a terrible that's, call. That's a bad that's call. That's a terrible no call, you know. <laughs> and there was another one where he said, oh, he, he might have hit, he might have like jarred the ball loose. And when they showed the replay, it was like a full fist to the head of the Georgia quarterback. You know, so – they, they got exactly what they wanted. They got Alabama in there. They wanted Alabama to win. They would have got them in there anyway. Alabama would have been dropped under the four seed been, or yeah. three seed or whatever it would have been. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. Georgia wins this game. I think it's a bad matchup um, against Texas myself. I don't think that Texas should be in this game personally, but I know that this is one of the old school ones where they take the second place teams, you know, kind of like the, you know, the – Big Ten champion against a Pac-12, you know, yeah. play in the Rose Bowl. For the Rose Bowl. So it's yeah. it's one of those matchups that you know still are hanging around. But um, you know, before we go, we got just a few more minutes. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take George's three teamer, and I and I'm gonna put. Uh, so tell me if you can give me one more because I kind of want to make it a four teamer. So these <laughs> these are the these are the three teams. With the most lopsided spreads, according to what what you said, what you thought the game would go by, and what the spread are. Number one game was Memphis. You said that they would win by ten points. They're laying four and a half or three and a half. The second one was Boise State. You said would win by thirteen, and they're laying three. And the third one was Vanderbilt uh, winning by eleven points. And it was minus four and a half. So that's my three teamer. I'm going to lock that in. I'm going to take that for an undisclosed amount of money, but it's going to be three figures at least. I'm not going to. I'm not a big baller like George. But uh, George, you got one more that I can throw in there that I can make it a four teamer. Your one of your favorites besides those ones. I have to look over this. I'm sorry. This, this, yeah, that's fine. See this, Billy? 
just made me go ballistic and use the F word twice and the F word twice, and now it's sucking up to me again. Ay, 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 ay. And I lived out there for seven effing years, help me. It's, it's all in there. Uh, I could just take this three, Timmer. But let yeah, me see. you better just take the three because, you know, that fourth one may be your. Uh, the uh, kiss of death. Oh, actually, it was Ohio U. Uh, I, I, uh, sorry, you didn't get to work on time. Uh, no, I actually got that. I actually bet that minus three a little bit earlier today. Good. Well, that could have been part of your four or teamer. Well, I didn't know 17 you were going to give me these at halftime. They're up seventeen nothing at the half. Okay, so we got a couple more minutes. We got about seven more minutes. Do you, do you have any uh, thoughts about? Um, let's talk a little bit about um, your view of Baker Mayfield. I mean, what do you what do you see, and what are you right. impressed he's, with, or uh, not he's impressed a, with? A, a team player. He's uh, he's is excited. He he has that huddle uh, pumped up, and the best thing that happened. It's in the, with Haley and Jackson being uh, uh, idiots, and and well, Jackson didn't deserve to be there to begin with. Haley used to be good with Pittsburgh, but a lot of Pittsburgh people that I know that I sit and have a beer with didn't like him at the end anyway because he he went against Roethlisberger. Mayfield loves uh, Kitchens, Freddie Kitchens. Even if Williams does not get the job, he's going to have an input into the offensive coordinator, and Kitchens deserves it more than anybody. All for one thing. He made him stop one step. He, he backs up one less step. It gives him an extra second, and you see he can be pretty accurate with that, and he's got a great uh, mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, anytime you hit... Two, two absolutely... I'm sorry, they're they're decent, but they uh, the inside the uh, uh, center and two guards are all close to all pros, but the the two tackles they're they're just numb and nuts. So, but you know, well, holding, I can t- holding, holding. I can tell you this that I I started rooting for the Browns last year when they uh, picked up my guy from. Uh, from Michigan, which I don't even know if he's still on the team. Is he even oh. on the team anymore? Oh, Peppers? Yeah. You don't watch the games? Oh, I'm a, no, do you last think Browns game, are on last, TV in Las Vegas? Last Come on. Play, <laughs> last play of the game, well, you usually have an internet. You can watch these things. Uh, you know, it's uh, go on there. There's, it's really interesting. Last play of the game, Ke- Ke- uh, Keenan, whatever his name is, he's, he's trying to drive him back into field goal range. Peppers comes right through and knocks him flat on his ass. Ball nice. Game. All right, so he is playing well. That's good. Hey, he's, I can tell uh, you. Actually, he's uh, um, uh, rated by Pro Football Focus, which I think some of their numbers are hokey, but uh, he's got a very good reputation. Top ten now, free safety. They just had him in the wrong position. He's closer to the line of scrimmage instead of being three and a half miles away. Beautiful. Uh, well, I can tell you this: that what I felt was the turning point for the Browns and their whole season, besides the fact that they fired their coach, was the, their trade that Carl aside. I think that Chubb should have started the whole time, and Don't Chubb is a Chubb will will show up, and I'm going to give you a prediction, just like I gave you my girly prediction. Prediction, <clears throat> Chubb will be in the top five at the at the end of the year next year, top five running back, and I'm talking about fancy running back. I'm talking about yards. This guy is explosive. He ran for 100 yards the a couple times this season. It's just it's taken him a little bit to get in the rhythm, but as soon as he gets in that alternate all pro there or Pro Bowl. I know Pro Bowl means nothing and I wouldn't watch it, but he's already uh, the second alternate to, to get in when, when these other guys back out. I mean, but think about this. This is coming from a guy that no one even had on their radar. You know, and this guy steps in and immediately comes in and it comes to play. And not only a, a guy that can run the ball but a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield and he actually can create other uh, plays. I mean, he kind of reminds me like a Theo Riddick, but a lot better. Yeah. You know, I mean, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's good in short yarded situations. I'm kind of excited to see what the Browns are going to do, and hopefully they'll be able to to pull together the right players in the offseason. They, they, they obviously – I did it for an uh, exercise the other day. They probably have 45, 43 players who I believe should be back in the – they still have plenty. They got sixty million plus in, in free agency money, and they have twelve more draft picks. Not not obviously as high as they had. They're 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 coming on. They're coming on big time. And Dorsey, if I know he can't be general manager of the year because the Bears guy should be, and he he deserves it. But second place, uh, I could fit him into that very easily. 
Uh, he's done a fantastic job. And yet the people in Cleveland, oh, your second-round pick is not starting. That's because the three guards in the center are all damn near all pros. Uh, yep. You have to wait in line. That's what you do. <laughs> Callaway, who's been uh, a troublemaker since then, he's starting to come around as a second receiver. Sixth-round draft pick, fourth, fifth-round draft pick. Avery, fifth-round draft pick. He's he's the old guy is going to be revealed. They'll get rid of old but next year put this kid in because he's an animal. There's, you know, it's... Uh, People don't know in this city what the what the frig to do, you know. Well, I think that a lot of people just kind of have that men- mentality still to like the same old Cleveland, but they're waiting for the shoe to drop. That's all. And right. It's, it's, yeah. And I and I and unfortunately, that's just because of so many negative years. It's kind of like if the Lions ever decided to get good, which I know they're never <laughs> going to, but if they did, the Lions fans would be like, yeah, "Okay, well, what's going to happen what's next? next? We're, we're a yeah. first round and out, okay. you know, type of deal." Yeah. Yeah. But I'm. <laughs> I'm more excited about what's happening in Cleveland, and I heard that when when I heard Bruce Arians step out and say the only team that I would have come out of retirement yeah. to coach would be the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that's a solid coach, you know, and, and that would be a great pickup for for Cleveland if they decide to go that way. Um, I think he knew exactly what was going to happen with Arizona, and that's why he quote unquote air quotes retired. But you know, he's waiting for the right position. We'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to see what happens in Cleveland. You know, I'm like low key a fan. You know, there's so many players I like on that team. I'm a Baker Mayfield fan. Bill will tell you, um, I I have been since you know last couple of years. I like the guy that's out there like grabbing his crotch at the other team. You know? <laughs> you know, if you're willing to do that and you're willing to step back onto the field after you do that to somebody, I mean that shows that you got some balls. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're a pitcher in the American League. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're 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 doing that and then going back on the well, field you know, and it's just you know it's just uh, one. One comedy routine. Oh my God! It's time to go. It's nine twenty-seven. I hope Do you have another pronosticator coming on. Or no, what there's only the one and only. Oh, you? No, <laughs> no that's all you, buddy. Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, I don't do political correctness. I don't care what your religion is. But Merry Christmas. Have a happy New Year. Uh, we'll talk next year, Billy. We always talk. Uh, if you ever are down and out. I'll always give you a laugh, okay? <laughs> All right, thanks. Merry Christmas, George. George, like I say, as always, we really thank you, man. And right. needless to say, man, I, yeah. I wish you the best during the holidays, and we, we're always talking. Okay. All right. Take care, man. All right. Later, George. Bye. Ah, uh, the man himself, George Jorge Mish, our buddy, the prognosticator from Cleveland on the banks of Lake Erie. And we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to switch directions. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Hal Bray and Sergeant Tim Sutton with Heroes for Autism. Did you know that over half of 25-year-olds with autism stopped receiving health care after they left their pediatrician? And almost half of those 25-year-olds with autism have never held a paying job. Is life so hectic that you just don't have time to get all those projects around the house completed? Well, worry no more. Tinker's Handyman Service is here and ready to help you. Tinker's is a company you can depend on to be honest and reliable. What sets us apart from other companies? It's simple. We care. Our reliable staff will help you with drywall repair, painting, popcorn ceiling removal, laminate and engineered wood flooring, also accent walls, crown molding, baseboard installs, cabinet and door repair, minor electrical and plumbing repairs, and more. Visit Yelp to see rave reviews from our satisfied customers. Call or text us today at 702-445-4812 for a fair and honest free estimate. Let Tinker's Handyman Service give you the free time you deserve. That number again is 702-445-4812. We're waiting for your call. Booyah, we are back. Round two, Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with Jeff Belknap. And as you can see, uh, we are not alone. Uh, we're, once again, we are very pleased to have back uh, members of the uh, Las Vegas Unknown Basketball Team, part of the World Club Basketball Association. And at the very end, returning, Tony Eccles Jr., yes, sir. owner of the Las Vegas Unknown, as player. well as player yeah. yes, and sir. owner of the Las Vegas Unknown, as well as the Silver State Kings. Correct. 
And as you can see with all of the black gear and the unknown logo, etc., these are all members of the unknown team. So to my immediate right, we've got Kojo. That's right. All right, thanks for coming in. And then Aaron, and then Kevin, and of course Tony. And then That's what right. you don't see is Kojo's wife, who is Danae, who handles some of the social media for the team. Yeah, and thank you very much uh, again for coming into the studio. Really appreciate it, and thanks for bringing some of the players in. Uh, hasn't been that long since you've been in. One week, One I week. told you. One week. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted to come back in. I was like, yeah, come on, man. So I'm getting old. I mean, I didn't know it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and again, appreciate you coming in because the, the more we get people to know about this team, uh, the more that, you know, and as we talked about with the season coming up in 2019, it's not that far off. Uh, and of course, uh, you actually had uh, tryouts this week. Correct. So Just we'll, ended today. Yeah. So we're going to get into that. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so in fact, let's start with you. And how did the tryouts go? Because uh, it was from Monday till uh, today. Today. As a matter of fact. Yeah, we had a good three days. Um, honestly, for me, I feel like um, it got better as the days went on. Um, it got more competitive as the days went on. It was just great to kind of bring all the guys back together. All everybody here was a part of our trip to London this past September, so it was good to see, you know, some of these guys again coming back into town and kind of, you know, um, you know, we were part of something really big. Um, winning the tournament in London is exactly. the reason why we're here. So right. it was good to see all these guys. I appreciate them coming out and you know, um, representing the brand, doing everything right, you know, doing all these things that we're asking them to do. So it was a good week of trial. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun to be back on the court. Well, congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Making it happen and making Vegas represent uh, on a global basis. Yeah. yeah, so I'm looking at, you know, a couple of these squads, and and I didn't know, like, some of these names are, like, super cool. So <laughs> I, li I, I really like the, the Cuttas. I, I knew you were going to like that. <laughs> and, and, the, and the dude has like got, that. like, literally samurai yeah. swords. The logo's got samurai swords on it. So – you know, kind of tell us, like, when you see these other squads, is everyone doing the same thing as you guys right now? I mean, is everyone doing the tryouts? Is everyone, like, putting this stuff together right now? Um, for the most part, all the teams are following up with the tryouts. Our team is a little bit different because we haven't been league affiliated. Um, so a lot of these teams are already um, – have been established as far as rosters and things of that nature. Um, and they've played in other leagues. We've been on a tournament-by-tournament -tournament basis. So – we're filling more roster spots than other teams, but um, you know we have we kind of have some catching up to do in that aspect. Um, but we're kind of one of the only teams that has been on the international platform. Um, so I mean we are up in that aspect as well. But um, other teams are hosting tryouts more so after this calendar year, and um, yeah, the league is following that pattern of tryouts and you know just kind of getting the word out about the league and trying to find players to build this network. Awesome. So you guys are obviously from different parts of the country. Correct. World, actually. World. Yeah, yeah I'm from nice. Canada. You're from Canada. Yeah. What part of Canada? I'm from uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Nice. So that's Hamilton. about yeah, 45 minutes from Toronto. You're yeah, a Tiger Cat fan. Yeah, a little, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I, decided, I'm not really much of a football guy, but. Um, what is it with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it was like pulling teeth out of this guy last week. Uh, because we're going to get to the question right. uh, that we have all of our guests. But, yeah, man, once you guys grab a round ball, it's like, man. Yeah, I don't know. I just <laughs> – it, it just – I, I when I, I wasn't the most coordinated as an athlete to begin with when I started at 15, hey, man, so yeah, join the club. I'm just happy that I learned basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly your coordination got better. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Did. No. <laughs> so what? So what about a, tr a Raptor fan? You Raptor fan? Yeah, I'm a Raptors fan. Okay, been to a couple of games. Um, excited about the season this year, but I don't want to get too excited until we get to playoffs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think after the second round of the playoffs, you got to kind of win in some games. Yeah, yeah, I would good say call. I'm too excited until after you second get round. further yeah. into it. Well, the that's good thing cool. is you don't have to go up against LeBron anymore. They that's got him huge. On, the, on the West. Yeah. So that's huge. They might you know? be able to get deep in there. You know, if you get to LeBron, you know you've gotten there. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know, there you go. We'll, we'll go round by round. Let's get to the second round first. And yeah. we'll go from there. They're, they're a good team. I like how settled there. Yeah, yeah. They're really yeah. good. So – Yourself? Uh, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Right. So you uh, you grew up playing basketball. Or like when did you start playing ball? Uh, I started playing basketball at a very young age. You know, like uh, my area, Baltimore, D.C. is 
that's all we do and play yeah, basketball. That's, that's a very – yeah, that's a very tough area to <laughs> play basketball in, very competitive. Where would you prep at? Uh, college? No, uh, high school. High school. Um, I played in a – a few really good high school programs, Cardinal Gibbons in Baltimore City. Okay. I played at Montrose Christian, which is uh-huh. very well known. Yeah, very and, it's uh, a high game program. Very well. Yeah, um, we're top 25 for as long as I can remember. Uh, we were preseason number one in the nation the year I went there. Yeah. Um, and I finished at Cushion Academy. It's a prep school in uh, Boston area, Massachusetts. And some yeah. really good guys came out of there as well. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. How about college? Uh, so, actually, uh, I played with Tony at Alcorn State. All right. And I finished at Fort Valley State University. So, that's where me and Tony really became yeah. really good friends, stayed in the gym. So, that's like my lifelong friend yeah. right there. You nice. Know, so. Good yeah. friends. Right. Yeah, it's all about, uh, you know, it really is a... You know, six degrees of separation. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. You'd be surprised at the people that you run into, and especially someplace like Las Vegas. Right. Uh, it's, it's scary <laughs> yes. uh, to run into people. Yeah. Kevin, how about you, man? Well, I'm from a, a little town called Ashtabula, where the birthplace of Urban Meyer, and uh, moved to, like, Minner, Ohio. That's where Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky's from there. Yeah. And, you know, that's, like, 15, 20 minutes away from Cleveland. So, you know, I tell everybody I'm from Cleveland so I don't have to give the whole background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Makes sense. Ask the who. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what it is. And, and they can't find it anywhere. Then I got to explain everything. But, yeah, my situation is completely different from everybody. I grew up, we weren't allowed to play sports when I grew up. Wow. You know, so I am a football fan, a baseball fan. I'm every sports fan because okay. you know, I got to play every single sport in the backyard <laughs> you know you know so you know move to that have some really wild games in backyards oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, it gets really competitive you know, it gets real serious <laughs> yeah there was like I, had, I have nine brothers oh, oh wow oh, right. oh, okay. yeah, we had so a big like, family so we had a baseball so, team, yeah right. so we had the team <laughs> parents we just couldn't play so you know? so was it did you guys ever break it up like four on five and you took the three big guys or, or the four big guys no it was always uh like the three, it was five older boys. Uh, one okay. brother was doing his own thing. The other brother was doing his own thing. So it was just the next three oldest boys. Yeah. You know, we always played each other. And, you know, it was very competitive and everything <laughs> and so Man. forth. You know. And Being then, an only child, I so wish I had <laughs> a brother. Yeah, eight. You know, it's funny because when growing up, you know, it was more like, man, why we have so many why do I have so many brothers and sisters? You know, because you go to school and, oh, my God, you have this many brothers and sisters, da, da, da. You know, now it's a blessing and it's a good thing, you yeah. know. But, you know, cousins always come over. So, you know, it was always – we have a very huge family. So you got a lot of cousins as well? Yes, a oh, lot nice. of cousins as well, you yeah. know. So, you know, then I moved out to Vegas, you know. been out here for about 10 years. Okay. And that's when I – didn't know anything about the basketball circuit, you know, wasn't really trying to make it big or anything else like that. It just was playing. And I met Tony, you know, and from there on, you know, I kind of took basketball a lot more serious. Nice. You know, took it a, a lot more serious. Well, I mean, serious. especially when it, when you get a chance to go over across the pond and play, yes, and play a game. Yes, yes. And, you know, it was, it was actually a lifelong dream. When I was a, a kid, you know, I used to sleep with the basketball. You know, and to have that taken away from you, the opportunity taken away from you at such a young age, it was kind of like I didn't practice or anything. Like, you know, everything was just like, wow, you know. But to realize it actually coming true now is a huge, huge blessing. I love you know? it. That's great. It made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Oh, no, that was really great. I mean, because, you know, people, a lot of people take stuff for granted. Yeah, for granted. Exactly. And, like, maybe you yeah. should come You should come to my house and talk to my daughter, man, because she's so spoiled. Like, she thinks she should just have everything. She was telling me the other day that she, uh, all of her friends have iPhone 10s, and I'm like, well, that's good, man. You know? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad you told me that. Uh, that's really good news for them. Yeah, you know? I'm on seven still. Maybe yeah. I was like, I'm a that has nothing to do with me. That's uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> but so you guys are obviously coming. You guys are getting you know one step closer to the season. What's next? I mean, what's what's your next step? Uh, so we're thinking about hosting a couple more local tryouts, um, just because we got a pretty solid turnout. But um, we feel like we could possibly do better on the marketing side and just bringing more people out. Um, we also we're focusing on a showcase that we're going to have in the spring with. Um, 
the teams out in Denver, since they have two teams there and we have two teams here, our plan is to do something similar to like the NBA Summer League, how they, you know, they kind of keep some traction in the summer. It feels like basketball is year round, basically. Um, so we want to do a showcase there up in March, just kind of waiting for some approval. And then April, I mean, before you know it, April will be here. Yeah. We'll have, um, we're looking at having a national tryout and one final tryout for the team. And then obviously training camp, media day will come around and the season, will, I mean, before we know it, the season will be in full swing and um, we'll be looking to head back to London, to, you know, defend our, you know, defend our throne. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. World title. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so four months does go by really quick. Yes. And, he, and like I always break stuff down to week. Bill and I own teams for a long time and I always look at it as weeks. Like, so when a week goes by, you're like, oh man, that's lost a whole week. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you're, you're really talking about 16 weeks. Yeah. You know, so like, do you have it mapped out? Like, hey, man, we're going to do this, this, you know, and and have that mapped. I mean, I know it's difficult, right. especially with two teams. Yeah. So the, um, for the most part, every week has its own task. The last two weeks for me have been, I mean, since I met with you guys, I've probably seen about 10 investors and sponsors and those type of things. Um, but even in this, I mean, today has been a crazy day for all of us. You know, we literally, I mean, we're in our basketball clothes. We left practice, you know, I had to travel across the town for some business and then we get here and we're probably going to have another interview after this. So, um, those are just the things like sometimes they are planned, sometimes not, but I think the next steps for our goal, and these are things that we've talked about, um, have kind of been to secure a staff, you know, to make the workload easier for us. We want to review kind of how this tryout went to see how we can be better. Um, and then from there, we're just planning out. We go, um, my plan is to start, you know, kind of um, having team meetings once a week just to kind of plan out what we're gonna do and um, kind of figure out how everybody can help continue to build this thing. But we wanna kind of start with, you know, getting people more involved because of, I think that has helped a lot in the last week. Well, I'll say the last three days because I've had various people, entrepreneurs and things like that that I've known that have come through um, just to check out our tryout. And I think it's um, been beneficial to us a lot. So just contacts, contacts, contact sport. It feels so like yeah. so when, you, when they do come to check it out, Make sure you remind them to bring the check. Oh, bring the check book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and that's like the business right there. I think yeah. more so. Yeah, a lot of play. Yeah, that's, that's everything. You need that. That's the It's not a GoFundMe page yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell them I was going to start checking. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, Bill and I know, man, what what it takes, you know, the, mm -hmm. the sacrifice that it takes, you know, for all you guys, because all you guys are trying to, you know, do your thing, you know, and, and traveling across the halfway across the world is not a cheap thing either. So, I mean, do you have some <clears throat> some prospects or how can people get a hold of you? You know, if they see this, you know, when they see this interview, yes. I mean, how who do they contact? Um, Well, we have contact information available on our social media page. We like everybody to kind of visit our social media just because it kind of gives them more insight on who we are and what we're doing. Um, that's kind of our um, landing page. You know, um, pictures are, you know, we want people to go through, scroll through, click that follow button, throw a couple likes on, um, just because we work really hard on doing that. And shares. Yes, mm -hmm. shares, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Danae, she's done an amazing job over the last few months um, helping grow our account. Um, but for the most part, you know, a DM or a message, you know, we're, we're available to, um, you know, make contact. It'll probably more than likely be myself for the next three weeks. But um, one of our goals that we have is to hire management to take care of all that stuff before January 15th is our date. So I can just go out there and get buckets and not worry about it. Nice. Yeah, well, it's good you that you've got miles. So you need a, set so you need a GM yes. is basically what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yes. Hey, it looks like uh, you know, oh, you you've you yeah. you guys have <laughs> team before, right? So. I've heard some good things about you. Uh, a <laughs> guy, Daryl Curry. Yeah. You guys know. Uh, you know, remember Daryl Curry oh, yeah. used to play ball yeah. with us? Oh, yeah. um, small world. We went to high school together, played ball together. I posted that thing Tell on Facebook. You. and. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, Bill and Jeff. I was like, yeah, Small I know world. them. Really is. <laughs> well, I can tell you this, that Bill and I have always tried to uphold the integrity of the mm -hmm. business. 
And the, to, to me personally, and I know I can speak for Bill on this, that's the most important thing to me. Mm-hmm. It, w- it wasn't about winning or losing for me. It was about having integrity. Right. It was about saying I'm going to do something and doing it, holding my players accountable to do the same thing. And to be honest, man, we lost a lot of really quality players, mm-hmm. you know, because they, they were really good players, but they didn't want to follow our rules, mm-hmm. you know, so they just went and played elsewhere, which I had no problem with. I'm like, bye, yeah. I'll see you later. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, the someone's cut me a check to, to – to sponsor the team, I'm not going to risk that on on a player that doesn't have it together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ultimately, so. you guys are the best salespeople that you have to represent yeah, the organization. Sure. Yes. And we always emphasize with that that everybody was a salesperson. You know, I was a sales guy. He was a sales guy. But the players themselves, they were the salespeople. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, they were the ones that you know, especially for young people. You know, yeah. I mean, I could talk. Of, you know, go up and say about oh yeah this 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 and you go man what do you play? <laughs> <laughs> and you are They're like what do you play, Grandpa? Come yeah. on, you know what do you do again? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have any players? Yeah, yeah you know, uh, you know what was it like? Uh, you know, for uh, for to be in London in England. You know, was it like the first trip for you guys? Or? Yes, that was an amazing experience for me personally because I didn't know any of these guys before then. Um, me, me and Danae, we we were in Australia before then. Nice. I was playing my first overseas season, season there. Then I uh, connected with Tony online, <clears throat> talking about the tournament. Thought it would be a good idea. It was We were going to go home anyway, so it was like a pit stop on the way home. Yeah. And um, I never, I've never been to England. Danae's always wanted to go to England, so yeah. it was really cool. And it was a nice, you know, small, nice town. You know, people were nice and stuff. It was, it was a really good experience. A lot of fun, a lot of laughing, a lot of winning. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there you, go. <laughs> yes. you know, went six and zero. It's pretty cool. All right. mm-hmm. yes. yeah, that's what you had to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my experience is really good as well. You know, I hadn't been out the country in a long time, um, and Tony he had been begging to for me to play alongside with him for a while. So uh, he actually got me back into basketball, really get me back in the gym, and it was good to run up and down the court, <laughs> you know, in an organized setting. So um, you know, I had a great time. He's breaking a couple of people's ankles. Nice. Right. Yeah. 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 He's going to downplay it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he was killing it. Threw me an alley oop. You know what I mean? Got everyone hyped. Yeah, it was so, cool. And then I was able was to cool. make some really good connections <laughs> with um, yeah, Kojo, Danae. My man Kev has always showed me love since the first time I met him. And, you know, Tony, like even when I left Alcorn State, I didn't really. I, I remember I, I hugged Tony goodbye, but I didn't really think I was ever going to see him again. Yeah. You know, we're from two different, you know, sides, uh, of, the country, sides of the country. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, basketball really does bring people together. It does. It's it really sports does. in general. It really mm-hmm. does. That's yeah, great. Man. Oh, man, it was a great experience for me also, you know. Um, learned a lot being out there as far as the money, currency, and everything else, <laughs> you know. and It's worth half as much as basically yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know, wasn't you? You turn, you turn your money, your thing, yeah, he turns his currency turn, into to to, euros. To the wrong, oh to the wrong currency yeah, instead of pounds. Do that in Canada the next time you do it. Because <laughs> you'll walk away with twice as much money. Yeah, exactly. yeah I know, right? And then, you know, like you said, the, the brotherhood of all of that. See, like I said, I didn't grow up, I didn't play high school or none of that, so, you know, being together with a team and the me experiencing all that, you know, that's that's a amazing feeling when you have a brotherhood with, yeah. you know, the, the guys on the team, and I was also injured, you know, so I really couldn't play, and I had to do a lot of sideline work, like you know, making Stats. sure the sideline, yeah. making sure the sideline was good, so you know we didn't get teased <laughs> or anything. Keep the guys off the court. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to keep the guys off the court. And all, all that, <laughs> it was, it was all that other which stuff. we know how basketball is. That could happen like it didn't you play almost. Just a few feet. Yeah, yeah, so you know, but it was it was a, a great experience. I met a lot of good players out there. I mean, we all just pretty much just came together. I mean, I played with Tigo, but Tigo was the only one I played with. That was kind of cool because like yeah. it was Different people, different games, and walks of life, whatever. Over, yes. We had a, a practice, and people were watching us, and they thought we'd been playing together for years. Yeah. And it was like, yes. nah, we just, nah, we it's the first just time. Got together. So it just, it just clicked. It was really cool. Well, that's the beauty about going abroad. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But well, we only have a few minutes left, so um, let's first get your social media out there to the people. They want to reach out to you. So uh, I'm mainly on Instagram, Kojo underscore 14, K O J O underscore 14. Hit that follow button. That's right. All right. <laughs> I only have an Instagram, just A underscore B I N G four one zero. Okay. Okay. Kevin. And my Instagram is Kevin Levon. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> there you have it. I keep it short and simple. Keep it simple. I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not trying to do all that underscore stuff. I'm not trying for all that because I won't remember. <laughs> yeah, mine is as simple as Kez, I guess. I, Tony Eccles Jr. Uh, the team's page is at Las Vegas Unknown. Um, I think we mentioned the league. Yes, we did. Um, last CBA. time, it's. World Club Basketball yeah, Association. Yeah, a couple yeah. Score, but you can find it. Um, yeah. And like I said, our contact information is on there through email. Um, we have a Gmail right now, Las Vegas Unknown, bball at gmail.com. Um, social media direct messages work for us too. So That's great. Um, and myself, I'm always, well, I'm not always on that stuff, but I'm on it enough to check that stuff. So, All right. so we're not going to ask Tony because we asked him last mm-hmm. week, but this is our, the question we ask everybody. We're going to ask for the AFC team, the NFC team, and, and the then Super Bowl. And, the, and then who's going to win the Super Bowl? You guys, I know yeah. a couple of you guys said you're not football fans. Do you have any idea, like, <laughs> of the ACU? You, you know what? I'm just going to throw out the Raiders. The Raiders. Okay. <laughs> so you don't know football, so no, we don't listen, know. Yeah, Vegas for so nothing else. 2020. Yeah, he right. sees the <laughs> Raiders stadium being built, so he said, yeah, 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 right. so don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. I don't really watch football. I don't know. Okay. okay. <laughs> clearly, yeah, I should, no, clearly, I should start. You know. But I'm not. I'm not betting lot. against Brady though. There you go. I'm not right. betting That's against Brady. That's pretty common. Yeah. That's pretty common. Okay. Well, Brady's losing, and I'm going with uh, the Saints <laughs> so and. Oh, <laughs> that's fresh too. <laughs> that is very fresh. I just yeah, picked like it up for uh, Christmas gift. Christmas gift. That is oh, nice. nice. But the Saints are going to some hints out here. So you got the Saints, and who's your AFC team? And the AFC team will probably be. Dang, that's difficult. But. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. Chiefs. The Chiefs. Right. Okay. Right. Gonna and who's gonna win it all? Saints. 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 Okay. Saints all right. Well, uh, I I switched up on everybody. I've been the Rams and the the Patriots because I'm just afraid that you know Brady's always yeah, got a Brady. chance. I mean, uh-huh. if he makes it there, he's got a chance. But I told I told people last few weeks that I believe that Chicago's gonna come in. They're gonna sneak in and and win a couple mm-hmm. of games. They beat the Rams uh-huh. a couple weeks ago. Yep. And if Trubis- Trubisky can stay solid. I mean that's your that's your team right there. But even even without uh, a solid quarterback, we know the Baltimore Ravens won with you know a crappy quarterback. You know so <laughs> defense wins championships, defense does. and that's why the, the Bears is a really good yeah. pick. Yeah. Yeah. But Trubisky is, to me, I couldn't pick him because he's just too young. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's your hometown guy, man. I, can I, st- I can't pick him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a realist. I'm sorry. I, I, that's right. So I'm that's why LA I got Bree. Bree. You know, I, 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 love I live and breathe L.A. football. L.A. Well, L.A. football since they're back now. Mm-hmm. Yep. I had to cut them loose once they uh, you know, ran out of town. But uh, <laughs> it's still the Rams, and I think it's going to be a repeat of the Monday Night Classic a few weeks back. Yeah, that was great. Uh, Rams in Kansas City. Rams win it all. I'm not sleeping yeah. on the Chargers either, though. Don't sleep on the oh, Chargers. I'm not sleeping on the Chargers either. Back so, yeah. Look at right. you watching football. There you, there go. you go. I'm a sports well, you got guy. some downtime in there somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> really want to thank you guys for coming in again and you're always going to be friends of the show and you guys have you know by all means you're certainly welcome and as we get closing in on the season but anything that you have coming up fundraising etc um, you're certainly welcome back absolutely okay. thank, thank, so thank you for having us we really right. appreciate it absolutely. once again we are always excited and we've got the las vegas unknown in and uh folks we'd like to since uh, next week is christmas and uh, we're going to be on a hiatus uh, we'd like to wish everybody a happy holiday, happy Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Yep, yep. Thank oh, you so yeah. much for joining us throughout the year. And then uh, we will be back on January Second. 2nd, yep. 2019. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from www.dvtv.com. Have a great holiday. See you next year. God bless. Happy holidays. <laughs>